This week we're talking about robot dogs again and we're going to talk about the ongoing strategy for a walking robot project. In the last few weeks I did an entirely different project and that was my Sonic the Hedgehog robot which was a two wheel balancing robot but it also had load cells in the legs that made its rigid actuators act like springs. And this was really R&D for the Open Dog project to see if I could make that robot more dynamic even though it doesn't have back drivable actuators by putting load cells in each of the legs. So I'm still not really sure what the answer is to that. I don't think they're reactive enough and I don't think that's going to fix my problems. It was an interesting experiment, but when the motion is fast, then things still went bad and it's not quite the same as having actual springs in the legs or having back drivable gearboxes like the test dogs I made where we did have back drivable gearboxes that gave us some compliance and we could measure that encoder position on the motor and react accordingly. And that was a much quicker route to balancing and making things stable, just softening up the legs when it started to tip and measuring that angle with an inertial measurement unit. I was much happier with that solution. So in terms of open dog, I don't really want to have to rebuild all the actuators and I'm not really sure what the solution is. I'm pretty sure we could make it work with some dirty hacks like just putting foot switches in so when a foot hits the ground it decelerates massively or turns up the motion filter that smooths out all of those motions and that might be a solution to making it slightly more dynamic but it's never going to truly be as dynamic as the test dogs I made with the back drivable gearboxes. It also weighs 50 kilograms and it's a meter long so it's pretty unwieldy. I really like something I can take to events and stuff which would fit in a flight case and go on a plane. So actually what I'm going to do is some experiments and I'm going to try and make another robot dog. We're going to leave Open Dog exactly as it is for future development but for now we're going to build another test machine and we're going to do that with mostly accessible parts. I really like something that the community can build as well and that isn't too expensive. Obviously with Open Dog we've got all those brushless motors, all the O-drives which are fantastic for driving brushless motors but that cost adds up. So I'm going to try and build a robot dog that's mostly 3D printed. It's probably about half the size, but it has much cheaper motors in that are much more accessible, but it also has some compliance built into the gearboxes inherently. So you may remember in the past I made various compliant grippers, and in fact I made a compliant robot arm. And the way that worked was at least the gripper has RC servos in, which is the sort of thing that would control the steering in a radio controlled truck. And then we had a gripper and that's controlled with a pulley with a string either side and two springs and that means the joint is naturally compliant because of the springs but we also have another encoder that measures the actual joint position. So that means we can measure the difference between the servo and the actual joint or in other words how much stretch there is on that spring and therefore how much force is being applied by the servo to the gripper. We can control that in software to make it compliant so we can either control and exert a certain amount of force or measure how much force we're applying so we can grip things with different tensions and of course we can also make it back drivable by sensing that we're moving it, sensing that the spring is stretching and moving the motor the other way accordingly so that it becomes compliant with wherever you place it for training and things like that. So this seems like quite a good solution. However the springs are pretty wobbly so we need to fix that but I think this could be quite a good solution. Hobby RC servos come in lots of varieties and that makes them really accessible. So with the right 3D printed mechanism to make it compliant and add that extra functionality we should be able to make something quite dynamic. So here's my first prototype mechanism. So what we've got is a Hobby RC servo. This is a 20 kilogram metal gear servo, but of course there's plenty of servos that are this size. We've got a 3D printed gear on it and another 3D printed gear. And of course this will turn the gears when the servo moves. And we've got roughly a two to one ratio. We could move the servo position and change the ratio, but for now I think two to one will give us plenty of power. So we've got this little thing on here and you'll notice there's a hole in the top. The plan is to put a Hall effect sensor in there which senses the distance from a magnet. And the next part is this thing, which has got two fingers that fit either side. And I've got two tiny magnets in here, about five mil diameter magnets. And they're opposing each other 
and there's one in each side of the fingers. So this gets sprung together with a little spring, which isn't quite tight enough, but for now we get the idea and that clamps everything shut. So for now this whole mechanism, that moves as one, of course, with the gear, but we can stretch the spring and move this piece, which will attach the leg or whatever it is, separately, and you can see those fingers moving away. So what's happening is the magnets are moving further away from the Hall effect sensor on each side, so that should give us a positive and negative swing on the Hall effect sensor, so we can measure the tension basically on this spring and how much we're forcing this joint apart or how much we're back driving it. And then we can actively use that data to move the motor, to have it catch up or oppose it and change the amount of compliance we get actively in code. So let's stick a Hall effect sensor in that hole and see what sort of readings we get. So I've installed my Hall effect sensor, which is a little transistory looking thing, which senses the distance from a magnet and that's shoved in the hole there. So we've got some numbers being read by an Arduino Uno, which is just reading an analog in and typing it out to the serial terminal. So now if I move my Hall effect sensor, or I move in fact the magnets away from the Hall effect sensor either side, we should see those numbers changing. It doesn't look like there's a very big swing though, so I can't really see what's going on there. So now if we look in the serial plotter, we can see that much more clearly. So let's turn that again. And we see, well, it seems to be working, but we've got this really weird sort of double dip thing going on at the top and bottom there. And I think what's happening is the magnet's moving further away on one side, but the other one is actually lifting very slightly due to the nature of these fingers. So one is lifting away, and in fact, they're both moving away at some uh, position there which gives us some very weird results, apart from the fact my spring's not tight enough, so we get lots of play in the middle. So we're gonna have to come back and slightly redesign that. So here's my version two, which is very similar. Again, we've got that geared servo, we've got the fingers that snap everything in the middle, but this time I've put the magnets here and here. So you can see one in there and one in there, and the whole effect sensor fits in the middle, and that means that these move to and from the magnet without moving in any other direction. So that should make a much more accurate reading. So let's stick our Hall effect sensor back, which just goes in the middle there. And let's look at the results. So now we should be to see, and in fact, we get a much better reading without that double dip. And that's a much better set of results. So now let's use that data to actually drive the servo and make the joint compliant. So I've now added this power supply, which is a six volt regulator, apparently capable of 10 amps. I got off eBay, I haven't tested it at 10 amps, but that's powering the servo. And I've now got my Hall effect sensor nicely taped in there. I left a wiring channel to constrain the wire so we can read that data and affect the servo. So first of all, you can see in the terminal, we've got the sensor data. So if I move this and skew the magnets, you can see that plus and minus swing. And we've also got the other column, which is the actual servo position, which at the moment is staying perfectly still, which is correct. So first of all, I'm just gonna manually move the servo. So this moves it through several positions and you can see that value getting updated. And these are the microsecond values for the PWM that drives the servo motor. So it ranges from 500 up to 2,500 and leaves it again in the middle at 1,500. If I go into the second mode, we've now got a very simple compliance mode, and that's taking the sensor plus minus swing and adding that to the servo position on every cycle, and the cycle goes round in a loop 10, uh, 10 milliseconds, so that's 100 times a second. So if I now move the motor, we should see that servo position updating and the actual servo turning. So that's making the joint compliant, it goes to wherever I put it, actively driving that servo in response to the magnetic Hall effect sensor and the gap of the magnets. So that's not too bad at all. In the third mode, we've got advanced compliance and that basically tries to always return it to the middle when it hits a dead spot. So now if I turn this, it's the same, but it always pops back to the middle. So that acts a bit more like a virtual spring. Of course, we've got the physical spring, which immediately takes the load and then the servo tries to catch up. And if it's at the dead spot, which is plus minus three on the sensor, then it springs back to the middle. So that's quite responsive, especially because we've got that physical spring supported by a software spring, essentially. So we're now in the same mode, but I've used a first order filter to take all the sharp edges off. So now we can see we've effectively damped that spring down. So now if I turn it, it returns back to its position much more slowly. 
and it's actually much more effort to turn because we've got the real spring, the physical spring, taking the initial load, but it's much slower to catch up, so it's actually much harder to turn. So we've effectively made our spring much stiffer and much slower, a much slower reaction, just like if we had some sort of shock absorber or something damping that spring down. So that makes it much less compliant, it makes it much more sort of solid, and that's how we can tune the robot compliance, the same as we did with the other springy legs, to try and balance our robot by making it more or less responsive. So I've made a modular leg. At the top half of the leg, of course, we've got that mechanism again. The only changes I've made are to recess the servo slightly into that gear so it's a bit smaller. And we've also got a slightly longer spring now at the top on this longer finger mechanism. So that works pretty well. And we've got a coupling there for the bottom of the leg. And again, we've got that exactly the same mechanism. I've moved the servo round again there to make a bit more efficiency for space and ultimately these two fit together. And of course we can make the leg longer just by putting an extension in there or reprinting the parts and putting a longer foot on. For now it's quite a handy size though for being powered by hobby servos. So here's my leg all assembled there. We've got the Hall Effect sensors and the servos wired back in. And I've put that in basic compliance mode. So now if I pull this up, of course, it will go all the way up to its full height. And its full height is about 30 centimeters, 12 inches, one foot. I've just got a 12, inch ruler here so we can kind of see that's the height to the bolt on the shoulder there so it's fairly okay sized for hobby servos and of course it folds all the way down each joint does about 90 degrees in total so that's its lowest height there which is kind of okay and i've now put that into advanced compliance mode so it acts a bit like a spring the filter's a bit less than before but if i pull this up of course it will spring back and it does that actively So that seems to be working pretty well. Of course, I can adjust these spring tensions, which will actually mean the amount of force I can apply before the Hall effect sensor gets any signal will be less or more. For now, that seems okay. I guess we won't really know till we put the body on the dog. And we, of course, try and take multiple feet off the ground, leaving a minimum of two on the ground, which means not only are we lifting the body of the dog, but we'd be lifting the other legs as well. So we need to get those spring tensions right, the filters right, and of course, the sensitivity right to act like a spring, but I'm pretty happy with that for now. I think that's gonna be a really good size for the size of the project. And also, you know, it's not too heavy there. Probably weighs less than a kilogram easily. So the whole thing is gonna weigh maybe five or six kilograms once all the legs are on and we've got the body on and the battery, which is much more manageable than a 50 kilogram meter long dog. And if I can't make this walk, I definitely can't make open dog walk. So this is a really good place to develop that walking algorithm, obviously with the compliance that we've got as well, which should make things easier. So I will be publishing this as open source once I've in fact done the whole design and got rudimentary motion from it. So if you want to support the channel on Patreon, have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots. You can also support me with YouTube channel membership and with my merchandise store. And if you support me on Patreon or YouTube channel membership, you can get the videos up to a week early for patrons and members and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up, including the next piece of the design on this. So if you like the project, don't forget to subscribe for more updates on it and also like the video. All right, that's all for now.